What is up everyone? Today is Tuesday, which means that it's time for another live Q&A all about dropshipping on eBay and Facebook Marketplace and anything else you guys want to know about making money online. As normal, I am your host, Paul J. Lipsky. So if you guys have any questions about dropshipping, making money online, then make sure to join us for one of these live streams and ask us, ask me in the chat, in the live chat, what your questions are about dropshipping R and or making money online, and I will do my very best to answer those questions for you. Real quick, if you guys don't know who I am, I make a ton of videos about dropshipping, making money online, so if that interests you, make sure to subscribe to the channel, then also check out the description of this video for a ton of free information and free content for you guys if you wanna learn about dropshipping. All right, let's now jump into the chat and see who's here and what questions you guys have. I did have some technical difficulties, so I'm not sure if everyone showed up to the right link. All right. Um, let's see. Um, all right. Omar says, hey, Paul, how are you doing? And what does API stand for? So I don't actually know what API stands for. I'm sure you could do a quick Google search and figure out what that is. But I can tell you like what API is and why it's important for dropshippers and why we do talk about it here on the channel. So API is a way for software to, do, to directly integrate with other software, in this case with eBay. So eBay is a website all on its own, but third party software can work with eBay. So a very simple example of this is like an accounting software, like maybe GoDaddy Bookkeeping or QuickBooks. Now those aren't built by eBay. They're not built into eBay, but it's third-party software and it can connect to eBay through eBay's API. So the API allows eBay to communicate with this third-party software so they can work together, making our lives as sellers better and making the experience on eBay better. Now, API has, you can do a ton with it. You can get like bookkeeping information. You can also list items through the API. You can reprice items through the API. But what eBay has specifically said is that they do not want their API being used for the purposes of repricing items based on prices on competitors' websites. So we as dropshippers, a lot of times dropshippers will dropship from other retail websites like Amazon or Walmart.com. Technically, that is against the API rules because that is one of eBay's competitors. So while they do allow us to do that, they don't allow us to do it through the API. So if you're going to use repricing software, which I do for my business, I just don't use ones that connect through the API. I use non-API repricing software. Hope that wasn't too technical, but I hope that kind of explains it pretty well uh, how and why rather we don't use API software when we use our repricing software for eBay. All right, Omar says, hey Paul, can you dropship on Best Buy? I've never tried it myself, I don't know. There's a ton of different platforms that you can dropship on you know, eBay, Amazon, Walmart, Macari, all these different places. I've not heard of anyone doing it on Best Buy. All right, Omar says, what is the difference between a, an SSN and an EIN? So this really comes into play when you are setting up a business. I do encourage people to set up a business if they're, even if they're going to do casual selling like drop shipping. Uh, SSN is a social security number. Every citizen here in the United States and uh, not just citizens can get a social security number, which basically is a number that identifies you for tax purposes and other purposes as well. And EIN is an employer identification number. And that's what's, that's basically like a social security number for your business. And that identifies your business for tax purposes. So similar in that way, but one represents you and the other one represents your business. And you can have a, a social security number and an EIN. Um, okay. All right, Omar says, hey Paul, is it possible to scale too fast and make too much money too fast on Amazon? Yeah, it is. So, you know, 
with all these platforms, I really encourage people not to scale up their business too quickly. And the reason for that is because when you do that, which is definitely possible with drop shipping, when you do that, then the companies, the marketplaces like eBay, Amazon, Facebook Marketplace, they say, whoa, what's going on here? Who's this guy, Omar, coming in, just making a ton of sales really fast? We don't. We wanna make sure that he's just not gonna take this money and run away and he's not scamming customers. So they get kind of nervous when they see new people come on and scale up too quickly. Usually what happens is that your account will be temporarily suspended until you verify that you are who you say you are. So basically you're showing the marketplace, the platform, hey, you know, I'm a real person, I'm really doing this selling, I just do a really good job at it. So then they say, oh, okay, here, here's your account back. But that takes time and it really uh, holds you back from being successful because you have to deal with that for the time period and you're not making sales during that time period. So I always tell people to avoid it from happening entirely just by scaling up at a healthy rate, but not too fast on the platforms. And this is really important for dropshippers because again, you can scale up really quickly. I have some students who have gone like zero to 60 really fast with dropshipping because the overhead is so small and the process of getting set up with dropshipping is relatively very, very simple. And adding new products to your store is very simple as well. So with most online businesses, when you wanna add new products, you have to go out and source them one way or another. But with dropshipping, in order to get new products, you can just start listing them up for sale. I mean, as long as your supplier has them in stock, you have them in stock. So as soon as you connect with a new supplier, you are instantly connected with all the items that they have available in their warehouse, which is sometimes thousands or tens of thousands of items. So that's how we are able to scale as dropshippers much faster than you would with most other online businesses. Um, Omar says, can you do wholesale and retail dropshipping on eBay, Amazon, Facebook Marketplace, and all those e-commerce marketplace platforms? Excellent question, Omar. And thank you for all these great questions that you asked before I even got here. So you had plenty of questions to answer for you guys. Yes, so the difference between retail and wholesale dropshipping. Retail dropshipping is when you dropship from other retail websites like Amazon, Walmart, HomeDepot.com, Wayfair.com, and you dropship those onto marketplaces like eBay, Amazon, Facebook Marketplace. Wholesale dropshipping is when you sell on those same websites or those same marketplaces but you're getting the items from a wholesale supplier or distributor. Now, when you do that, you're higher up in the chain of production. So the items are made by the manufacturer, they're sold to a distributor, and the distributor sends them to the different retail stores. So the higher you go up in that chain, the cheaper the item is going to be for you, and that means more profit in your pocket. So the higher you go up, the cheaper it's gonna be, but the problem is in order to get higher up, you do have to form a real business. You have to develop these business relationships with the distributors or the manufacturers in order to get those items and those deals from them, which um, is more work and more time getting set up to do that. Whereas if you go with retail, buying from like amazon.com, you could get that set up and going today within like an hour. So it's much faster, but the margins aren't as good as wholesale. Now, wholesale dropshipping is allowed everywhere. It's allowed on eBay, Amazon, Facebook Marketplace, and um, yeah, in those places. Retail is technically not allowed on eBay and Amazon, but people do it anyway. They have a lot of success doing it anyway. So uh, really, the risk is up to you, but wholesale is definitely totally allowed. Thanks, man. <laughs> um... Uh, what what about getting along with our business partners, Paul? You know, business partners can be tricky, man. I mean, I have a lot of friends in this industry, a lot of people that I mastermind with and, you know, bounce ideas off of with and say, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? But um, I have never had a business relationship with any of them or partnership, really, I, I should say, because it gets, it gets, uh, it gets tricky, you know? Um, I'm not sure I could handle that. I'm a bit of a control freak. I like a lot of control over my business. So having a partner, you know, I think, you know, I, I've seen partnerships go really, really poorly. I've also seen ones that are highly successful. So 
It really depends on your interpersonal skills, but personally, I've never, I've never had a partner for any of the businesses that I've done. All right, thanks for the reminders to smash a like button. Would appreciate that, guys, if you're enjoying the content. Marjorie, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for coming back. Um, all right, so Marjorie posted last week about some issues she had with a tracking number. She has an update for us. Um, she, Marjorie won the case. The buyer reopened the case with a new reason. Transaction not recognized. Wow, I won that case too. So yeah, so I think if I remember right, Marjorie had an issue where the buyer opened up a chargeback saying that they never received the item um, or something like that. And then Marjorie uploaded the tracking number for that order. She won that case. And now there's a, the buyer reopened another case saying transaction not recognized. Marjorie won that one as well. So this is why it's really important, guys, to always upload your tracking numbers. Some buyers will try to scam you. They're going to try to claim they never received the item, issue a charge back. It's really unfortunate. Most people don't do that. Most people do the right thing. But this does happen. You have a better chance of winning those chargebacks in those cases if you upload your tracking numbers. <laughs> hmm. Two questions. Why does Facebook Marketplace have a negative balance? Do you enable offers on Facebook Marketplace? So Facebook Marketplace would have a negative balance if you've had refunds and no new sales. That's, that's usually when it happens. Or if you've had so many refunds and not enough sales, if that makes sense. Um, but usually it won't happen if you're getting consistent sales and then, you know, you have like this much in sales, you have some refunds, so you still get, you still have a positive balance there. As well as offers on Facebook Marketplace, in the beginning, I would definitely turn them on. If you want to turn them off later, you can do that. But offers on Facebook Marketplace will allow people to say, hey, I know you're selling this for $30, would you take $28? Or maybe they'll say, would you take 25? And you'll say, no, but I'll take 28. So you can do some negotiating has, uh, haggling there. Um, so that's up to you. In the beginning, I think it's a really good idea because it at least gets people interested. You could start the dialogue, maybe sell them on the product um, through the through through chats on, on face, Facebook chat, Facebook Messenger rather. And so you can do it that way. But if it gets annoying after you start scale up, you can definitely turn that off. Hey, what's up, Levi and Kai? What's up, guys? Hope you're doing well with the course. They won access to one of my courses last week during a webinar that we hosted. So big congratulations to them. Um, what's up, Jason? Hey, Kimberly, thanks for being here. Um, Jason says, what are your thoughts on version two of AutoDS? AutoDS is the software that I use for both my eBay business and my Facebook marketplace business. Let me see if I could bring it up real quick, or at least um, the one that I use for like uh, YouTube videos where I don't really care about if you guys see anything because there's nothing really on there. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be able to log in. So give me a second. Uh, hmm. That's weird. Okay, I can't pull it up right now. But um, AutoDS, yeah, that's what I use. So basically what it does for eBay is it allow me to, it helps me list items onto eBay. And if the price changes or stock level changes on eBay, it will automatically make those changes on eBay for me. And uh, with Facebook, it will help with the price and stock changes as well. Uh, I've loved it. It's been a great software. They just released version two. Um, they've released it this year. I've been using version two for Facebook Marketplace for a while and really, really like it. I think it's a very clean, user-friendly um, look to it. And the settings are, you know, everything's the same. It just looks nicer and, and seems to work better. Now, what happened was that I was using version one for eBay, so now I was transitioned over to version two for it. And the transition, I know for a lot of people, wasn't the smoothest. There was definitely some bugs, there's definitely some work involved with moving it over, which was you know, a pain, but it is what it is. Now we're in version two. I personally like it better. I think it works better. So I've been very happy with version two of AutoDS. Um, okay. Okay, 
Kavinda says, hey Paul, my seller level is now below standard. Should I give up on my account? Uh, no, don't give up on your account, man. So falling below standard stinks on eBay. Basically the way it works is you can either be um, top rated seller on eBay, above, above standard or below standard. Every seller on eBay falls into one of those three. You have to be at least above standard and don't worry really about top rated seller. It doesn't matter. You really don't get any benefits for it as a drop shipper. So all you're aiming for is above standard and not to fall below standard. Now, quite frankly, I don't find it too hard or challenging to stay above standard. Basically, you have to upload all your tracking numbers, respond to all cases, um, uh, handle all your returns, you know, different things like that. The issue comes in when you don't do those things. So you want to make sure you're always responding to your cases. You're never canceling orders or being out of stock or just at least don't do that too much. And you're not going to fall below standard. If you do fall below standard, it can be hard to climb out of that. But the way you climb out of that is you get more sales. You don't get any defects for those sales. And then the math works out and you're no longer below standard. You go back to above standard. During that time, it's really important that you respond to all cases, that you upload all tracking numbers, and that you don't cancel any orders for being out of stock. Otherwise, you might slip further below standard, which you don't want to do. Uh, yeah, I'm going to make one. So stay tuned to the channel for that. I have no uh, set date for a Zeke Analytics product research video. Um, Woohoo, guys, that's awesome. So they have their EIN. They've set their business up. They're on their way to doing wholesale. Sounds like you guys are doing it right, setting up a business. That's exactly what you should be doing, especially with wholesale. To make sure your ducks are all in a row, you're, you're doing it all right, and you got all the protections in place. Can you have two Facebook shops connect to the marketplace for free traffic? Uh, generally, no. Generally, you can't list your Facebook shops products on Facebook Marketplace. It's supposed to work and it doesn't work. So uh, I wouldn't even try. Um, this is a little bit complicated, but um, they will tell you when you need that information. Why do you stop selling Amazon dropshipping course? I'll be making a video about that uh, you know, sometime this month. Why don't I do wholesale on eBay from Alibaba? So I only do drop shipping on eBay and I do not drop ship from Chinese websites. I know I've made some videos about it before explaining how it works and I know I've talked about it before, but I really just don't do it. I've tried it, I really don't like it because the products take a long time to get to customers, returns can be a huge hassle and the quality of the products has never really been exactly what I want. I've ordered these products for myself, had them delivered to me, and I'm always like, I don't even want this. This is junk, but it's not even worth me returning it. And that's when you get bad reviews. So I do not drop ship from China. I only drop ship from US-based suppliers, whether that's retail or wholesale suppliers, where the items are gonna get to the customers faster where the items are gonna be better quality, and if they're not better quality, where the return process will be pretty straightforward. Um, let's see. Sweet. Looks good, guys. Um, so with India, I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure where you should be selling if you're from there. All right, Imran says, I've been hearing many people have been getting an email from Amazon saying that drop shipping is against their policy. Has anyone been banned for Amazon Prime for drop shipping? So the email is not people who are drop shipping onto Amazon, but people drop shipping from Amazon. So think about people who are drop shipping from Amazon to Facebook Marketplace. Some people have gotten that email saying, hey, we see that you're using Amazon Prime for the purpose of reselling, and that's technically not allowed. Now, some things to note about this email. One, I've gotten this email before. I got it about, I think it was two years ago, probably at this point, maybe three years ago. I know many people who have gotten it over the past few years, 
and Amazon has never taken any negative action against our Amazon Prime accounts. My thinking is that they send out this email maybe once a year to people, but so far they've never done anything about it. They never actually kicked anyone off of Amazon Prime that I know of. So people are still drop shipping from Amazon Prime onto Facebook Marketplace or in the past eBay. So yeah. The other thing that's always weird about that email is that it's usually the grammar and the spelling are usually atrocious. It's very strange. It is from Amazon. We can tell it's actually from Amazon, but it's very strange because the grammar and the punctuation and the spelling is just terrible. And you're kind of wondering who wrote this email uh, because yeah, it just doesn't look very professional at all. For eBay, I use AutoDS, which we uh, I talked a bit about before. Everyone says, I've heard of one person getting banned. I'm worried because Amazon is my only supplier. The only time I've heard of people getting banned from buying from Amazon is when they use discounted Amazon gift cards. That's when things start to get sketchy. Um, and that's when I've seen people get banned. So I think what happens is that, so what happens is you can buy sometimes gift cards, like let's say a hundred dollar Home Depot gift card for $95. So you save five bucks. You do that many times and you could actually make some good money on that. Now, the problem is with Amazon discounted gift cards, who would be buying, who would be selling rather a discounted Amazon gift card? I could see if someone gets a Home Depot gift card, they're like, I don't actually want this. Let me sell it for like $95 and I'll keep the cash. But with an Amazon gift card, Amazon gift card is pretty much cash, right? You could buy anything on Amazon. So people don't sell their Amazon gift cards unless they're selling it at cost. So when you when you get a discounted Amazon gift card, the question is, where is it coming from? And I think a lot of it's from pretty sketchy stuff that I just don't want to be involved with. So uh, I'm not surprised that Amazon looks at that with disfavor and says, hey, if you're using these cards, like they can somehow identify them and people get in trouble for using those. But that's the only time I've heard of people getting their Amazon buying accounts shut down. You can drop ship on Amazon if you're doing wholesale. Retail, I, people are still doing it. People still do it a lot, but I'll be making a full video about this and the problems with that uh, you know, very, very soon. Um, yes, Walmart provides tracking numbers in most cases. Jay says, do you still recommend non-API, Paul? I'm thinking about API. I hear sales can be a bit better with API. So Jay, mm, I explained the difference between API and non-API. Like I said, eBay doesn't want you to use API for re repricing purposes. And in the past, if they found that you were doing it, they would lower your, your results they would lower your um, your listings in the search results. Now, recently, a lot of people who use API says that eBay has stopped doing that, that even if you're using API, you're still fine in the search results. Now, that's great. I don't know how long that's gonna last, okay? Because we've seen this happen before and then eBay went back to kind of flagging those accounts. So I'm, Pretty optimistic person, but I'm also cautious. I'm not gonna just say, oh, now it's time to go API, because I'm also trying to be careful and smart. So I think, you know, wait a few more months. If API still works, maybe I'll consider it, but you know what, non-API works um, just fine, so I don't really see too much of a benefit of going full API. Uh... All right, howdy, Texas. Sales have picked up a little, I'll take it. Let's hope it keeps going up. I love this business. Yeah, man, I love it too. I mean, just to be able to do this anywhere, to be able to do it whenever I want. I mean, it's a great, great business, such a low overhead. Um, and what's up in Texas? I mean, great state, big state. Every time I drive drive through it, I'm like, wow, this state, we must be almost through it. And we're not even like halfway through Texas. So <laughs> everything's bigger in Texas, right? Um, let's see, Sri Lanka, what's up? Uh, 
Okay. Wendy says, almost everyone I know that hired a virtual assistant for Facebook Marketplace uh, has gotten their account shut down, some forever. Is this still an option for Facebook Marketplace or should we avoid it for now? Uh, well, Wendy, I'm really sorry that that's happened. I've heard of it happening to a few people under these circumstances when they hire a virtual assistant. So let me explain what a virtual assistant is, why this is happening, and and what I've done to prevent it from happening. So a virtual assistant is someone who you hire usually from the Philippines or maybe it's from India, where the cost of living, it's a country where the cost of living is much lower than here in the United States. So we can usually pay them a few dollars an hour. It's a good wage for them. And it's not like the cost of hiring someone here in the States. So, and because it's all online, they can, they can help you run your business. We use them for eBay, we use them for Amazon, and we started using them for Facebook Marketplace. Now the problem, the problem here is with IP addresses and location of the virtual assistants. Because what eBay, sorry, Facebook Marketplace is seeing, or Facebook is seeing, is that, hey, here's Wendy. Uh, no, here's Wendy. And Wendy is located, I'm not sure where you are. Maybe you're, you're here in the United States, Wendy. So Facebook says, okay, here's Wendy. She's logging into her Facebook account here in the United States. And all of a sudden, there's a new login from the Philippines, like 20 minutes later. That, that is sketchy to Facebook. They're saying, oh wait, what's going on here? Why is someone logging in from USA and then 20 minutes later from, from the Philippines? This account has clearly been compromised in their opinion. So that's when they kind of shut things down, they get nervous. So what you need to do is trick Facebook into thinking your virtual assistant is here in the United States. So you have to use a VPN to do that. There's a right VPN to use, a right way to use it. This is something I teach all my students inside my Facebook Marketplace dropshipping course. I have a whole mini course in there about how to hire and train virtual assistants the right way and the safe way and how to do that with the correct VPNs. And I've been doing that. I've had no issues with it. Many of my students have as well. So it does appear to be working. But you can't just have them log in um, without a VPN and you can't have them use a commercial VPN like NordVPN, that stuff won't work. Thank you for being here. What's up, Mike? How do you get a tracking from Amazon? Amazon will email you the tracking number. Facebook will ask you for your bank info once uh, when you when you set up your shipping option. Do I set up different eBay accounts for different wholesale suppliers? No, I don't, because then I, have, I would have too many eBay stores. Um, I just sell them all under one, and we keep track of everything in a spreadsheet. I mean, all of my retail stuff is in one store, wholesale is in another, so that's that's a way that is organized. Um, but yeah, we just keep track of it in, in spreadsheets. Okay. Uh, okay. Kelsey says, I'm seeing a lot of low or non-existent views on Facebook Marketplace. A lot of people saying that only happens to them when they use certain software. Are you seeing this correlation? Uh, no, I, I, I don't believe that that is a cause of it. Um, this is the first time I've heard this, this rumor, but it doesn't surprise me. Whenever, whenever people on any marketplace, I've been doing this for a long time, guys. I've been doing this for like four or five years now. Um, I've been in the forums, I've been in the Facebook groups. So I hear what people say and it's always the same stuff, and then they stop saying it, and it comes back, and then everything, there's always so many rumors about dropshipping and the way it works, and everything gets twisted up. Really be careful what you read and what you believe in these different Facebook groups, because so much of it just gets so twisted up. I'll hear a rumor about eBay that, in the first case, isn't even true, and then that rumor will kind of go away, and then like six months later, it will pop up, as a rumor about Facebook Marketplace, that's pretty much the same rumor, but like even more like wrong. And it's like, where did that even come from? It came from the rumor about eBay, which wasn't even true about eBay. So things can get so twisted and the truth can just get so 
uh, hidden. Um, so just be careful what you're reading about. So I never really believe that any single software can be responsible for poor views on on uh, any marketplace. Really, really the only close correlation we've seen to that is when you're using API software. That's been very, very clear. But this stuff like this, I haven't seen any issues like this and no reason to believe that, that that's true. Um, uh, Jay is usually our resident troll here. He says he's too exhausted trolling TikTok that he's a sweet boy by the time he gets here. <laughs> yeah, TikTok is notorious for the trolls, isn't it? Um, tell us who your secret low-cost pr product supplier is. <laughs> Don't have something like that. How do I connect my wholesale CSV files to Facebook Marketplace? I don't, so there is a way on Facebook Marketplace to, to upload products through sort, sort of a CSV file. Mm. But I, I don't do it. I just found it too annoying. It's just too annoying. I'd rather upload products one by one. It just kind of makes a, a lot more sense. How can I get a tracking number for Walmart orders? Or do I have to call them every time and show proof of delivery? No, Walmart will, will email you the tracking numbers when they're available. Some Sometimes they don't ship with tracking numbers, but usually they do. So uh, you can just log into your Walmart account and get them. What's up, man? Um, Skewgrid is better than AutoDS. AutoDS is just after your money. Um, okay, I mean, I just screwed that. <laughs> I think AutoDS is great. I think it's very user-friendly. I think SkewGrid is great too. I just don't think it's as user-friendly. Um, they're all after your money, right? They, they all are for-profit businesses. They have a right to charge money for what they do. Um, but yeah, I think AutoDS is great. Um, hmm. I'm not sure exactly what the, what the issue is, Wally, uh, without looking at your account, but you should be able to connect your bank account. You should be able to... Um, uh, get paid. <laughs> That's okay, Kevin. Glad you're here. You'll get it back up. It takes time. It's 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 a challenge, but you'll get it. Um, you can. Well, yeah, you can do that through through AutoDS. It tracks, it tracks multi-variation listings. So um, I'm not sure exactly what your question is because it, it's able to track that with version two. Um, okay, Parker says, I just made my first sale and AutoDS is making me pay for the auto order. I'm just not sure, I'm just making sure I'm not getting scammed. So Parker, you don't, first congrats on your first sale, man, that's awesome. You don't need auto ordering. Um, if you want auto ordering, you got to pay for it. So it's not a scam, but you don't have to do it. You can you can uh, opt out of that with AutoDS and just manually fulfill the order yourself. That's what my, I do and my team of virtual assistants does. Uh, we don't do any auto ordering, um, but that's up to you. It's, it's if you want it, turn it, leave it on. Okay, what's the most important ranking issues or factors for eBay? Um, real quick guys, I got to turn on the AC in here because it is getting hot. I have it off because of the noise, but I think I can turn on this little background noise blocker and you guys should, you guys should still be able to hear me but if I turn on the AC. You shouldn't be able to hear that. Okay, and that'll make me feel a lot better and I'll be able to go further for longer. All right. What are the most important ranking factors for eBay? Yeah, so the most important factors are, first, you gotta make sure the products people actually wanna buy. So you gotta do product research. Look at what's already popular on eBay and you wanna be selling those same products. Don't just list up any random products. That doesn't work. You gotta list products that people want to buy and are already buying right now, okay? So that's first. 
Then you want to make sure you have optimized titles, optimization of photos as well. Um, those are going to be the most important things and categories as well. You're welcome, man. I uh, don't sell on eBay UK. You inspired me to start. That's awesome. Waiting on my business license for the supplier. What's my next step, man? I'm not sure where you're at. I mean, it sounds like you're getting a business license. I mean, get connected with suppliers. Start building those relationships. Tell them you want to drop ship and, you know, find some good products. Um, no, no, we don't do Facebook shops for drop shipping. That that doesn't really work. All right, here we go. A little mastermind going on. Um, would I go over this? Would I have a large category of thousands of items or niche down? Okay, so with drop shipping on these marketplaces like eBay, Amazon, Facebook Marketplace, there's absolutely no need to pick a niche. A niche is when you say, okay, I'm only going to sell water bottles, or I'm only going to sell things related to pets or dogs. That's a niche. You don't need to do that on the marketplaces because you're selling via like search results. People are going to search for dog beds. If you're selling dog beds, they're going to show up. If you also have water bottles in your store, then when they search for water bottles, those will show up. Okay. So you don't need to pick a niche, just sell a huge range variety, uh, large variety of items and that way, when people search for anything, some of your items will come up. Niches are really only necessary when you build your own e-commerce website, like if you're doing a Shopify store, because if someone logs uh, comes to your website and they see dog beds, and they see water bottles, and they see computer cases, and you know bike helmets, that's just like totally random stuff. It's not really related. People are like, what? What does this person even sell? But if you sell just like dog beds, then people know that this is the website I come to when I'm looking for a dog bed. Like that, this is like the dog bed website. But that's not needed on on these marketplaces that I sell on, like eBay, Amazon, Facebook Marketplace. How much you up on the day? What does that mean? Uh, I don't use Sam's Club. Sam's Club, you can drop ship from them. But they'll start to cancel your orders if you um, ship to too many addresses, which we do as drop shippers. There are ways around that, but uh, I've never figured it out myself because I just don't need to. I drop ship from suppliers that I don't have that issue with, so I just don't bother figuring out for Sam's Club. Do you need any license to drop ship? Technically not to start, but you uh, you should get set up with your state to um, make sure everything's legit and for tax sales tax purposes. No Walmart drop shipping. Black God said they still got the Amazon email saying they would be banned from buying if they don't stop using their account for resale. Can't confirm the email's legit but they can still place orders from Amazon with no issues. So there you go. My pleasure, Rich. Thanks for stopping by to say hello. This is not even alive. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, nope. I mean, you asked some questions that I forget what the issue was with your questions. I think they were like, um, yeah. I think quite honestly, your your questions were not something that I could answer, just because they were um, very specific. Okay. Um, I'm new to drop shipping. What is a reasonable number of sales to get in the first month? Um, 
it depends on what marketplace, what items you're selling, retail or wholesale. I mean, with any of them, you can you can make sales very, very quickly. But I wouldn't expect on any of them to make a profit very quickly um, or, you know, a you know reasonable profit. It takes time to scale it up. You definitely can. I've had students make profit like hundreds of dollars profit their first week with the with um, with with uh, drop shipping. But, you know, it's very possible it's going to take longer than that. But it's a very exponential type of business. You know, you get started up, you get it going. And then once you get the ball ro rolling, it can really roll. It can really grow fast, especially something like drop shipping that's so easy to scale up. So, um, yeah, the, the name of the game is patience. You got to be patient. A lot of people, they, they hear about drop shipping, they think they're going to get rich quick. That's not how it's going to go. Okay. You got to be patient with it. It does take time to do it, but really worth it because once you get that ball rolling, it can really roll. All right. So once you start to sell items, that limit can be increased. Um, sell items, get good feedback, upload tracking numbers, get customers or orders, and that's when uh, they upload uh, up those limits. Um, I don't do Amazon to eBay, but if you want auto ordering for it, uh, AutoDS can do that. That's great. Yes, we do. Unless it's a Vero item and then we don't sell it. Um, should you have listings from, oh, I didn't know this. When Facebook marketplace, when you upload an item, you can just choose miscellaneous and Facebook would automatically change the item to the correct category. Oh, that's interesting. I've used miscellaneous and I've never noticed them change it, but uh, maybe I just never noticed it. I'll have to look back at some of the items I put in miscellaneous and see, see what, maybe they change it. I don't, don't know it. If you're doing Facebook marketplace, we always sell from our personal profiles. You don't need to create a business profile or business page or anything like that. Sell from your um, personal profile and that's it. Okay. Sorry, there's nothing, no, no spots available. Don't drop shit from Costco either. Muhammad says, what strategy would you prefer? Listing a thousand items and having 4,000 sales a month or less than 100 products and 2,000 orders a month? Whichever one is gonna make me more money. I mean, with drop shipping and with the software involved with it, really doesn't matter too much whether you have a thousand listings or what'd you say or a hundred listings okay because a lot of it's so automated um what really matters is what's going to make me more profit i mean i guess i would prefer if if profit's the same i prefer the one with less orders a month because that's easier to manage in the past when i used to drop ship from lowe's which i don't do anymore and would not recommend that you do lowe's is really difficult supplier to work with terrible customer service they forget to ship out tracking sorry they forget to ship out orders and they forget to upload tracking numbers um their returns stink as well uh, they were they're just a mess to deal with but i used to make a lot of money drop shipping from lowe's um because you, it used to be really easy to buy discounted lowe's gift cards and lowe's coupons um that were and the coupons were legit so used to make a lot of money from Lowe's back in the day, um, but they kind of cracked down on that. So it doesn't really work so much. But what I used to do, I used to sell really cheap items. I would sell like five or $6 items and I wouldn't make any money on them. But when I combine like these items together, like a bunch of them, all of a sudden these coupons click in like $20 off $100 order. So for every $100 I sell, I'd be making at least 20 bucks in profit, sometimes more. Um, that's really good money after a while. It's 20% margins on a very simple model, even with cheap items. But 
that was kind of an exception. That's kind of um, doing the low, low, the cheap items is, is kind of annoying. I'd rather sell higher priced items, which is really what I'm focused on now. Higher priced items, better, more profit every single sale, less orders. It's just a lot easier to deal with. It ain't pre recorded. I don't, I mean, people ask me this sometimes hey, is this live? Is this really live? This isn't live. Uh, I mean, I do these every single week for you. I go live for between a half hour to an hour every single week for the past, let's see, 18, 19, 20, like three and a half years, something like that. Like how many lives do I even have? I can't check right now. Um, I can probably check how many I have. So, I mean, I'm not going to go record this and then do it every single week. I'm just going to go live every week. So there's really no point. Uh, in me pre-recording this because I do it every single week. How many lives do I have? Um, I'm able to see how many there are here. Uh, select all. I don't know. Oh, I have 479 live streams. So that is about 479 weeks. 479 divided by 52 is uh nine years so that doesn't seem right at all i haven't been doing this for nine years but i have done some oh because i went live every day for like two months once so yeah i mean i've done four the point is i've done a lot of live streams and i'm not going to pre-record them for you guys um i'm actually here live interacting and hanging out with you guys um actually what i could see was when my first live stream was that'd be cool to see so let me see my first live stream is and then let me answer a question for you guys um whoops wrong one. if i upload an item on facebook marketplace as miscellaneous do you think that might decrease the number of views seems like facebook would automatically change the item to the correct category i'll have to check on that um but i don't i don't know i think the only time it would mess up your views is if you um, get put in a category that doesn't make any sense for the item. That's when it would really, really mess it up. So uh, yeah, my first live stream was December, 2017. So I've been doing them like every week for four years almost. So three and a half to four years. Yeah. Okay. Hey, what's up, man? This is why I don't like AliExpress. AliExpress is such a pain when it comes to returns. They make you take pictures. They make you justify the return. I don't like doing it. So uh, it's a reason I don't use AliExpress. Uh, awesome. Hey, Paul, Shadow, and Aaron here. Thank you for your time. We are working our way through the courses and learning product research. We love your videos and appreciate you. Thanks, man. Really appreciate you guys. Uh, thanks for taking the time to let me know. Okay, Jay Martinez says, how much does it cost to start drop shipping on Facebook Marketplace? Very little. You don't need to pay Facebook because if you have a Facebook account, you already have Facebook Marketplace. You don't need to buy your inventory up front because with drop shipping, you don't hold the inventory. Only once it sells, do you turn around and buy it from your supplier. So you will need a credit card to buy the item until Facebook releases the money to you, but you're technically buying that on credit, so it's not money that you need to actually have. Um, so there is that. The software, you can get as cheap as, what's the cheapest plan? I think you can get as cheap as like $15 a month. Uh, and the other software, so it's probably gonna be about $25 a month for the software. That's really all you need. So yeah. Yes, of course. Not only is product research important, but also the title that you use. Um, I would say finding the right products is the most important thing. Then. Oh, oh, I see what you mean. Um, I see what you mean. I'm not sure if they've added that to version two yet. I know it can track it. I thought it could list it. 
but I'll have to check with my virtual assistants. Um, I know it can definitely track it. I thought it could list it, but now, but now I'm second guessing that. Um, if you're using wholesale suppliers, there's a whole process in order to find those. But if you're using retail suppliers, if you're selling on Facebook Marketplace, go for Amazon and Walmart, uh, maybe Home Depot. Those are great ones. You can also do like Wayfair is good, Overstock. Those are all good. Um, some people do eBay to Facebook Marketplace. That works okay. You're going to run into some issues with some, some people, sellers not shipping out their items though. Um, on eBay, the suppliers are going to be the same, except don't do eBay to eBay and don't do Amazon to eBay as well. I also, I don't do wholesale on Facebook Marketplace. I only do uh, retail at the moment. Sweet, good plan. Especially if you're doing wholesale, you're not gonna be using AutoDS for, for wholesale. Um, I don't know of a place to buy stealth accounts anymore. I used to know a place, I tried it out, it actually did work, but uh, it, the whole thing was very sketchy. I didn't like it, so I can't recommend one. I don't do auto order, no. Um, I prefer to do it manually, or my virtual assistants do it manually. Just the way you've always done it, it works, so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, yeah, so my belief is that the more active you are on any of the, these marketplaces, the better it's going to be. So on eBay, you know, you list some items every day, you fulfill orders, upload tracking numbers, are in your eBay account doing stuff. I always think that that helps. I always find that the times I kind of take time off of eBay and don't actually even log in, I've seen my sales go down. Maybe it's just a coincidence. Maybe it's all in my head, but that's what I, I've noticed. Um, same thing with Facebook Marketplace. So I think it definitely helps the more you're active, the more you're involved, the more you're showing these platforms that you care and you're being an attentive seller who actually uh, pays attention. Um, Costway and Wayfair are great suppliers, um, but I don't sell in the Canadian market, so I'm not really too sure to be honest. But I do know that Wayfair is great. I've used them in the past, um, and I've heard great things about Costway as well. George, you can post in those groups. Um, it can be tedious to do that and to identify the right groups and to join them, but they definitely do help. So it's worth a try. Okay, Dominic says, any advice on ways to find wholesale suppliers that someone new to drop shipping should use? Or should I just focus on retail? Um, Dominic, that's up to you. I really think everyone should give wholesale a shot because it's really the future I see of drop shipping. It's where eBay wants us to go. It's what eBay wants you to do. It's fully compliant with their rules, so you're not going to run into any issues with it. It's really the smarter move if you can make it work. And a lot of people are making it and getting it to work. Retail, it's easier. It's very simple. Um, it's a quick win, which which I get. And um, lots of people are doing it with, with high success. But uh, just know that it's not technically the, the rules, not technically the way that you want to do it. Um, that's why I, I still teach both. That's why I still teach retail, because I was just trying to teach wholesale, I was trying to tell people, hey guys, you should move to wholesale. But people are like, well, but you're doing retail, it still works for you. I've heard about it, I wanna do it anyway. So that's why when people join my course, they're able to learn both. You can learn retail, or you can, and you can learn wholesale. You can pick which one you want, or do both. Uh, really, the choice is yours. Uh-oh. <laughs> I think you're kidding. You're kidding. Okay, good. <laughs> I've been very careful. I've gotten, so one of the challenges of being a YouTuber about, uh, makes content about my eBay store and have a course about it is that I always have to be really careful when I'm making videos so I don't accidentally expose my store because this happened before 
and people have come in and copied all of my listings and that just stinks. I mean, I'm giving out all this free information and they come in and just steal all my products, all my hard work. So that, that really stunk. So I had to create like new stores and luckily those people stopped selling anyway. Um, you're not going to be successful if you do that, if you copy all of my listings and all of my titles and try to undercut me in price. Um, so it's unfortunate. That's why a lot of my videos I use like, like dummy accounts where like there's no, there's nothing on it so that I don't expose anything. But I've, I slipped up before. <laughs> I've gotten lazy before and said, oh, I'll just show my account. I'll blur out everything. And, and then, uh, it didn't work out so well. And luckily some of you guys are awesome. I've gotten messages from you guys saying, Hey Paul, you just uploaded a YouTube video and you know, your store name's right there at the top and you able to delete the video before it has like more than a couple hundred views. So you guys are awesome for doing that, for letting me know. Um, Okay. Just upload my first products. I'm manually processing orders. Is it a good idea to create a separate account for Amazon to drop ship to eBay? Yeah, I don't think it's necessary. I don't. Um, I use my personal Amazon account and still buy stuff for myself from it. So. Other lives. Oh, nine lives. That's what you meant. <laughs> I get it now. This is a challenge with Walmart, DoorDash, and, G and the GSP. Um, and honestly, I don't have a solution for it. I don't. Um, so, I mean, a few times this happened, uh, either Walmart returns it back um, or, you know, a couple times it's gotten lost and other times it's actually worked out um, somehow because of the reference number, I guess. But I don't have a good solution for it. I'm still trying to figure that out. Um, I use software, so it's pretty, pretty instantaneous. All right, guys. So, oh, happy birthday. Uh, 18. All right. I'll be opening it up very soon for uh, enrollment again. All right, so I know we have a bunch more questions, so I'm sorry we're not going to have time to answer them. We always run out of time, but that's awesome because you guys ask so many great questions. Thanks so much, guys, for hanging out with me again for live stream number 470, what did we say it was? 479. So thank you, guys. I appreciate that. And if you guys got any value out of this video, I would appreciate you giving the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because... I do these live streams every single week, 479 of them so far. So come join us, ask any questions that you have, and I'll see you guys next week for the next live Q&A every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Mountain Time. See you guys then.